up, everybody? Welcome to the Tuesday edition of the what is this? What do, what do we call it? Yeah, the Helium 10 AMA Helium 10. Ask me anything. This is episode 17. I can't believe it. Time flies. It actually feels like it's been a long time since we've done one. It since does. Another weekend, right? But, anyways, my name is Bradley Sutton, and I'm joined by Matt Benton. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, wanted to uh, go ahead and give a Heads up to all you guys. We have a new question of the day, whether you're on um, the live broadcast or whether you're watching on the replay. Uh, Matt, you have, you're have you usually the one with a question of the day. So what's the question that you want to ask everybody? Yeah. So how many of you watching now or on the replay are launching a new product for Q4? So how many of you are launching a new product for the fourth quarter? Okay. Very good question. So please put that below. Um, and even if you're not going to do it, uh, I'd be curious to see why. So let's say uh, even the answer is no, make sure to put why. And, you know, maybe you want to wait until the, after the Christmas rush or hit the diet crowd in January, the New Year's resolution people. But yeah. for those who do not know anything about Helium 10, uh, we actually got a question. I was just uh, looking out. Somebody said, what is Helium 10? So, Matt, what is Helium 10? Tell them. Uh, Helium 10, it's an all-in-one suite of tools for Amazon sellers. So at this point, we've got over 20 tools. Uh, everything from product research to keyword research to listing optimization to refunds to our new analytics tool, Profits. Uh, you name it, we've got it. Uh, and a lot of new things coming. So we're going to touch on a few questions on today's AMA. Of We had a few questions come in on new recommendations for the tools. And that's something that we're always fielding and, and adding to the suite are your recommendations and our users really drive our tools. So keep those coming. All right. And then we, uh, just my own little personal game. I like to see who is the farthest away. Um, usually, uh, used to be, who was it in the UK? Jacob, right? I think so. Ja yeah. I haven't seen Jacob on in the last few broadcasts. And then we had somebody who was on at three in the morning from Australia. So I'm just curious if you think you're the farthest away, please also put that down low. I want to see who, who wins that, uh, that award and remind me at the end, we, we need to do the drawing from last week's, uh, to see who wins the shirt from last week. So Got I don't it. want to forget that. Okay. Anyways, I had told you guys in the description of today's broadcast, I wanted to again, go into Cerebro and the new tool that I think a lot of people are underestimating and don't understand the value in it. So without further ado, let me get into Cerebro here. Uh, let me post this. There we go. Hi, this. All right, here we go. So, What's my favorite search? Collagen peptides, right? Don't do it. But I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do something completely different. Accordion, all right? So no collagen peptides for once. Sorry, uh, uh, John, if you're watching. Rest in peace. So let's say, not rest in peace collagen peptides, not John. <laughs> just, just make sure. All right, so let's say that I have an accordion, all right? Now, this probably would be the you know largest volume keyword. So the old way is that you're thinking, okay, um, the largest volume keyword for my product, I got to make sure I'm like the first couple positions on page one and I got to see what everybody is doing. So like, you know, like on this page, you can see that there's a variety of accordions and maybe the old way um, I would have run x-ray, you know, which is not a problem. But if you notice here, just at, the, at, at, at a glance, there's like kind of two different kinds of accordions here on page one, you know, uh, we've got, uh, what is this? This is a kid's accordion that's only $22. Now, let's say my product was um, something like, like this, all right? Uh, Rizzotti Bronco accordion, like a professional musician's accordion, like one that a mariachi band would use or um, whoever uses accordions. I don't know, but not a kid's. So you can see this is $300. This is on page one. Now, here uh, ahead of me on page one or uh, at the top of page one, We've got a lot of kids accordions. Now, the question is, the old way would be you're like, okay, I got to make sure to beat everybody on page one. Let me see what this guy's ranking for. Let me see what this guy's ranking for. Let me see what this guy's ranking for. But is that really the good strategy? If you have a $300 accordion, is a $16.30 accordion your competitor just because he's on page one of your main keyword? The answer is no. He's not your competitor. It, it doesn't you're not in competition with somebody who is looking at this listing to get the sale. All right. You're in competition with these other guys. So that's where this new feature of Cerebro comes in. So why well, uh, take a look here. Let, let me just go ahead and get a random um, one. I'm going to go ahead and hit this one. This is a sponsored ad. So maybe he's not organically on page one. Let me just make sure he's not on page one. 
it's not on page one. Okay, so let's say this is my product. So in Cerebro, I'm going to enter that right here. Now I'm going to start looking here on the ones on page one that are my competitors. This guy is Amazon's choice and page one position position one is he my competitor no i couldn't care less if this guy's selling a thousand units if he's if this guy's on page one here because there is no way that me with my 350 dollars accordion that i'm going to be competing with this guy for sales no somebody who's going to look for a kid's accordion he's going to buy this somebody who's going to look for a bigger accordion is not going to buy this so here we go risotti bronco this guy would be my competitor i'm going to add him here under competing nations Woodstock Kids Accordion, $23. My competitor or not, Matt? No. No, not at all. That's a pretty cool toy, but I'm not going to compete with him. Here, here's a $600 one. This very well could be my competitor. Let me go ahead and put him in here. Another one, $619 one. Let me go ahead and put him here. And another one here. I'm going to go ahead and put him. This is a sponsored ad. Sponsored ad. And a shirt. This guy's on page one, but he's not my competitor. I'm not going to put him. Toe, I thought this said toenail. It's according to his toss nail. All right. Whoever came up with this brand needs some help with the, uh, coming up with a brand name. Toss nail. Uh, but that's good. I can do up to 10, but just for time's sake, I'm just going to do these four. All right. And now I'm going to hit this reverse search. Brand new search. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to go find out what everybody any of these people, either me, quote unquote me, or any of these competitors, what they're ranking for, because that's what's going to give me a really good idea of where I need to be. So now, as you can see, we have a list of only 95 keywords. This is kind of a real narrow niche because, you know, $600 accordions, it's not going to be ranking for 2000 different keywords like, um, you know, collagen peptides. Is. So I want to know where they're getting their sales from. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put anything from page one. So from page one to let's say, or position one to position 20. And I want to know what at least two of these guys, should I pick two or three? What do you, what do you say? Let's do three. Right, let's three, let's three. Do three. So I want to know at least three guys are, are ranking for this keyword. And that, that, that kind of makes sense to, instead of picking two, because if it's two, you know, how relevant is it going to be if half of the major players in this niche don't even have that word in their listing? So uh, I, let's go with what Matt says and let's pick three. Let's see how many come up here. Seven. So this gives me a very narrow list. Now here is how you use the new Cerebro feature. All right. I do not care about exact search volume. All right. You know, usually this is what, you know, the very first thing you do when you get to exact, when you get to a, a three rows, like, okay, I'm going to go search by exact phrase search volume and, and pick the highest volume keywords. No, what I compare or what I uh, am concerned about is the relative rank. What does the relative rank mean in this situation, Matt? So in this case, it is your rank. So Bradley entered in his ASIN or the one that he picked mm -hmm. against four competitors. So it is his rank in comparison to all four of those competitors, I guess there's five total counting himself. Exactly. All right. So just as a quick overview, if you guys have not used this tool, uh, by the way, if anybody who's watching live or on the replay, if you've already uh, used this new option about the uh, competing products in Cerebro, please let us know um, what you think of it or if you have tried it or if, you, if you're going to try it today. But if you have not tried it, please pay close attention so you can see how to use it. So position rank, this is... You know, if, if this was my product, you know, this one right here, this is, you know, directly cheap accordion. This is where I'm ranked currently. All right. Relative rank, as he says, you know, this is where I rank uh, compared to these guys. So, for example, if you mouse over here, it shows the, the one guy is ranked number one, another two, another four, another seven. And me, I'm 20. So since I'm last place in that group of five, I'm re my relative rank is five. Meanwhile, here. I'm actually ranked number two, and the next guy is ranked number three, five, three. So here on this one, my relative rank is number one because I'm already beating my competition. Competitor rank average. What does this mean, Matt? Competitor rank average, I'll read it off for you. Uh, average rank of competitor ASINs, ASINs that did not rank are ignored in this calculation. Okay, so uh, actually on, on these, there is nobody who is not ranked. As you can see, ranking competitors, we had put a minimum of three, but actually every four is on everyone. That means all four, all of these keywords, all four of these guys 
are ranked. Um, so this is where I would look at. I'm going to look at relative rank because these keywords are most likely where these guys are getting the majority of their sales. You know, if they're on page one, it's it, that's probably where they're getting their sales from. So where do I rank in comparison to them? Like if, if I'm only selling like two or three units a day, I'm not basing my, my success on where I am, um, my, my own rank on the page, because like we showed you, there's tons of kids, you know, there could be like 10 kids accordions, on a search page, but only one expensive one, you know? And so that means if there's only one expensive one in my mind, I'm position one there, even if I'm 10th, you know, that's what you got to kind of, kind of change your mindset of how you do keyword research. So what I would do is, Hey, accordion is pretty important of a keyword at this point. Yes. I'll go ahead and look at the exact phrase, but even if this had said 10 or something that wouldn't have dissuaded me. All right. But this is, obviously uh, a keyword that I need to do something, whether, you know, it's a promotion, you know, doing a giveaway at it. You can't really do a giveaway with a $599 pro uh, dollar product, but maybe you send a lot of outside traffic to this listing. You, you do a, um, a promotion in Facebook or Instagram trying to uh, get people to order this product under this keyword. Uh, perhaps you spend a little bit more on PPC, right? But whatever I got, whatever you're doing, I need to make sure my relative rank is higher because I'm last place amongst my main competitors on this one. I'm doing good. That doesn't mean to turn off your PPC or, or stop focusing on this keyword. No, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So you can maintain that, that number one ranking your goal. If you want to be number one in your niche, the, the bottom line is unless you know you're competing with name brands which are, you're, you shouldn't be really competing with is if you're number one in relative rank on all main keywords guess what guys you're going to be beating everybody else on sales all right so you want to get this relative rank number one even if it's page two like let's say you know this rank to be number one in this niche is to be page two position one well guess what it doesn't matter you're number one based on your competition so Guys, I hope you understood that I was I really I don't think I explained it uh, well when I did the collagen peptides last week or it wasn't that I didn't explain it well, but it's a different it's a different mindset. You know, um, this can help you to really focus on who your competitors are and how you rank relative to them. So, guys, please let me know if that if you, if that was understandable for you have any questions on this method. Um, it's something that you can do right away, like right even if you're not launching a product right now, you would do that to see where you rank compared to your competitors, and you might see some opportunities. Sometimes you might see a uh, NR right here. What does that mean if, if they see an NR? Yeah, if you see an NR, that means not ranked. So that product is not ranked uh, in the search results. Yeah, so maybe a uh, important keyword that your competitors are gaining sales for, you don't even have in your listing. This is how you would find that out. So guys, I hope um, you were able to understand that, and let's go ahead and get into the questions before you leave yes. bradley i don't know if you guys caught there was a punchline in there so bradley mentioned that this is kind of our indicator of where folks are getting most of their sales from or the closest we can tell right no one knows where folks are getting sales from on amazon which keywords but uh, we've developed this these new columns within cerebro and this serves as a really good indicator of what some major like top sellers are using uh to determine where these sales are going to which keywords so relative rank and everything bradley just touched on someone mentioned please save this video all these videos are saved on the helium 10 facebook page and then go down and click on videos on the left so all these videos are saved and you can rewatch them all right thank you guys for answering the question today i, I see a few of you are launching uh, products in q4 paul is um kevin is mary is kimberly is so congratulations to you guys uh william is reiko has some problems with uh, the typhoon in china um here's a question uh, maybe matt can cover from fabricio which marketplaces is covered from the helium tens tool so obviously we're in the u.s marketplace but we just launched a couple tools for other ones too right yeah absolutely so my favorite tool uh, is x-ray so it's in the Helium 10 Chrome extension. It allows you to pull up an X-ray, the Amazon search results page to see how much folks are selling. That tool just expanded to the UK and Germany. And the majority of our tools work in other markets. Some of them don't. Uh, they're primarily .com, US-based uh, tools where they work best. We've got the most data. 
Uh, that's where that's our bread and butter. Um, but we are working on expanding to new markets. Bradley, what's coming in Q4? Is it Black Box? Black Box is coming in, in, in Q4 for some other marketplaces and also the um, also the uh, Spain, Italy, and France, France for, for X-Ray. So be looking for that. So what else do we have here? All right. Okay, this is, I think Malcolm is talking about what we just talked about. He says, it's great to know where you stand, but so what? How do we fix it? Excellent question. Yeah, this, this information is only valuable to you if you're actually going to do something about it. So, you know, one way that you could do it is, is focus on PPC. Like maybe you don't have any campaigns uh, focused on what some of these words were. You know, like for example, right here, here is accordion, but a, misspell, a misspelling of it. Maybe you didn't have that in your listing, so you would put that in your listing. Or maybe you have it in your listing, but you, you, you're not sending any traffic to it all. So you try and make a manual campaign, a broad campaign, perhaps perhaps a phrase campaign, trying to get some some pickup because you know Amazon really rewards you. You know if you're doing PPC, you're you're going to get some some love from from Amazon, and you're going to see this uh, rank go up. And the the individual who kind of told us about this technique, that's what he does. He he uses PPC in order to increase his ranks. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but you know, if it happens over two, three, four weeks, if it takes a month, it doesn't matter. If it takes a month, you do whatever it takes to get to number one. And the difference between being number one here and number five is huge, guys, especially in a real niche market like this, where you don't get you as you can see, these are the top keywords. You don't you're not getting that many views. So it's so important to the actual conversions that do happen are you know that you're getting a big chunk of that's real important and if you're not running ppc right now like if you're trying to do what bradley and malcolm suggested right so this data is great but what do i do with it bradley's suggestion was to run ppc if you're not running ppc you should probably rethink that because the way i think about amazon is google 10 or so 15 years ago right now on amazon there's not a whole lot of major giant brands advertising or running sponsored ads on Amazon. So once those folks do uh, catch on to what's what's going on in Amazon and finally give in and say, all right, I'm going to sell on Amazon, those costs are going to go up and probably squeeze the smaller folks out of the market. So I'd get on it soon and you'll be rewarded. Okay. All right. So let's go on to uh, some of our questions. Al had this question and he says, if you have two to three products and you feel they're all equally good opportunity, how would you use Helium 10 to figure out which one of them would be the best to go with? That's an excellent question, Al. So maybe you use Black Box or whatever tool you're using and you you, you have um, located three products that you think have high opportunity. So first of all, if you have done that research, then you've probably already used X-Ray. You probably already see that there is, you know, an opening possible, uh, possibly like, for example, maybe some of the people do not have that many reviews or they have bad reviews, or maybe you use black box in order to find that, uh, some listings don't have many images, but you found three good ones. However, you found it. The next step would be to use perhaps one of our new tools. So like, let's say, um, you're doing a toy, <laughs> a toenail. I can't get over this. What, what is up with this brand? If, if, if this is one of your brand names, I apologize, but I don't know why you would make a brand name Toe Snail. But anyways, let's say you have a kid's accordion, right? Well, and you had two other products. Well, the next thing that I would do is I want to pick what's maybe the most profitable. And Matt didn't know I'm going to ask him, but do you know what is our new tool, Matt, that people can see instantly if they're going to make a near identical product to this where they can calculate their profit? You kind of just said it in a different order. Profitability calculator in the Chrome extension. Profitability calculator. So I can do that by going to the Chrome extension on the page, or I can hit this right here, which says calculate fees. So let me hit that here. So let's say I was going to even source it from the same factory or whatever. So I know the dimensions are gonna, about going to be this. I know that this is going to be the uh, approximate weight. But what um, I need to put in here is what my cost is. So like, let's say my cost is going to be $6. All right. And my freight is only going to be a hundred dollars per cubic meter. Well here I am now am able to see approximately after all the Amazon fees and my cost and how much it costs me to ship it to Amazon. I make $7 and 18 cents. Okay. That's decent. But maybe you run this on uh, two of the other products and you find that 
um, you make more than 33% profit uh, during during the first quarter. So that if I can only pick one out of the three, this might be my tiebreaker um, in order to see because at the end of the day, I want to make money, you know, and maybe those other two products I would save for later. But I want to I want to launch the most profitable. So I would use the profitability calculator for for that. So thank you for that question, Al. Let's go on to a question for. Was this one of yours? Yeah. All right. So this is from Sophia. All right. This is a long one. So let me try and. Or you, you you're closer. Can you yeah, can you in. do it? Yeah. Uh, this one's about black box from Sophia. Sophia, thanks for sending this in. Uh, black box. I'm a new Helium 10 user looking for my next opportunity and was trying to use black box. However, I think I haven't understood how to use it properly. I see 10 pages with a total of 200 products. Tons of them are variations. When I change the filters, I see some new products, but I'm mostly scrolling through the same previous products with new variations. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Please clarify how I can maximize the use of black box. So, she mentioned, Sophia mentioned a really good or a common issue or something that you might, a lot of you might run into. So she's seeing only 10 pages. Most of these pages of results in black box. Again, let me backtrack. Uh, black box is our product research tool. So Bradley, if you want to open that while I'm talking, uh, this is how you're going to find products to sell on Amazon. So you enter in your criteria, Bradley, you want to enter in maybe some dummy search criteria while we're doing this. Sure. Um, and you're seeing a number of products and you can't get to 200 or 201 and beyond. What's happening here is that your search criteria is too broad. So you'll want to make it more uh, acute and that way you'll, you'll be able to see more products. Um, Bradley, is there anything you would add to this? So, I mean, yeah. So like I, I, I just did a pretty broad one, which is like baby category, more than eight thousand dollars and a review rating of four or less. That's honestly not enough criteria, and that Sophia might be something you're doing here. So that's why we have um, all these advanced filters, you know, so you can hone in uh, and and really laser focus something. Like um, another one I would do is I only want stuff that's a maximum of, of two sellers. Um, I don't want something overweight, so let me pick something under two pounds. Um, let's say, Hey, she's, she was complaining that she didn't variations. want to see the variations, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I only want something that has a max of one variation. Um, let me see how that goes. Um, but see now I've only found 154. So for some people, for me, I'm happy with 154. It gives me uh, a pretty narrow focus that I know that out of all my criteria and out of the 450 million products in our database, only 154 meet this criteria. That gives me a pretty, you know, some of you guys still, you know what, I want to focus it more. So, okay, maybe you'll pick, you know, somebody who's only has like four images. I, I don't even know. I doubt somebody is, has that here. And it, oh, so there's 44 products here, but I, I, you, you guys can see the process. You just right. keep narrow, narrowing it down. But if you're especially worried, Sophia, about the variations, we have, we got a filter for that. It's like those old commercials from Apple. We got an app for that, but we got a filter for that. Anything else for Sophia? No, that's all I got. All right. Um, I have a question here from DC Comics. Oh, no, I'm sorry. DC Fawcett is his or her name. How do you find the hottest selling products and best buying keywords to focus on? Well, right here. This is how I would do it. But guys, think about this. Don't always think about the hottest new product, all right? Because chances are if it's a hot product you've already missed the bandwagon like you know maybe last couple of years ago you saw fidget spinners and you jumped on that bandwagon and you're selling for 4.99 a product that you get three cents profit on because it's saturated so actually what i look for is not the hottest selling product i just look for decent selling products like in this pay case this is pretty high actually i was like give me a product that makes eight thousand or that you know has a monthly revenue of eight thousand dollars so don't go crazy here and put like a hundred thousand dollars because the odds of you breaking into a market like that successfully, unless you, your pockets are loaded, is really low. I go for ones that do not have that much competition because they're not that quote unquote hot. So thank you for that question, DC. Uh, PJ is saying that his profitability calculator is not working. PJ, please make sure to uh, send a support. Looks like the tool is working fine. I just use it right now. So make sure to, if you're having an issue with your Chrome browser, 
uh, might be your Chrome browser, or if you think that something with a tool and your location, make sure to send that to uh, support at helium10.com. Thank you for that. And the PJ. Chrome extension uh, updates automatically, but just, just to make sure, uh, make sure you're using version 4.0.1. Yes, 4. Point. So the way to do that is click here, and then you can see which version you have. So make sure to see that, PJ. Thank you for that question. All right, let's go on to our next one. The long uh, question. Actually, this one I think we did already. Okay. Yeah, I think. Or did you, did you do that one? I think so in the last Yeah, I think episode. we did that one. All right. How about this one? Oh, yeah. We have a lot of um, suggestions here. So let's just go over some of these. Matt, um, can you read some of these suggestions that we have and then let them know what they can do? Yeah, let's group. We'll group some of these together. So uh, Anne said, could you add roles in Helium 10 tools, VA purposes? Uh, that's something tough to do for the bigger sellers. We've asked that they just get another Helium 10 account. Uh, that makes a lot of sense for a number of reasons, but we will pass this along and anyone else with any suggestions, send them to support at helium 10.com. Okay. And another those will suggestion get, here. Those will get to the dev team. Give uh, this guy priority. He has a good name. One more from Brad. <laughs> uh, when will, when will you add bulk upload of costing to the new profits tool? The tool is great for users that have more than 10 products manually entering these costs in when they can change frequently, it does not make sense to do this manually as it is prone to error and takes a lot of time. Again, uh, Brad, we'll pass this on. Uh, and I think it is something we're working on right now. So stay tuned. Okay, and I think we had one more suggestion. And, we, and guys, you know, you could submit these, you know, support um, or put them here and we'll make sure they get forwarded. So we, we love, I mean, all of our tools, you know, over the last year or so have come, you know, from, from you guys, you know, people giving us, you know, people seeing at conferences and saying, Oh, I wish you could do this. Or people sending emails like this whole thing that I went over in Cerebro, that was from, you know, a user who used Cerebro, but then he did this whole other process. And he's like, it'd be kind of cool if you guys could do this. And, and, our, and our CTO boy, was like, that's a pretty good idea. And immediately started working. And that was just like four weeks ago. And two weeks later, he had it up and, you know, up and running. So, um, we rely on you guys. How about uh, Ross? Ross here had a couple suggestions too. Ross, I used to work with a guy, Ross, the most interesting man in the world, I'll tell you. Uh, question one, he had two questions. Will you be adding some optional expenses we might have to the profit tool? Uh, his second one was, I sell on Amazon as a non-US company and I also have to pay VAT on referral fees or coupon redemption. Can you add VAT to the profits too? We'll pass that on to the dev team. That I don't know if we've considered, uh, but we will circle back with the dev team and see where that falls on the roadmap. All right. So thank you for those suggestions and keep them coming in. And uh, if any, uh, for if those of you just joining us, the question of the day is, are you launching a product in Q4? And if not, why not? I remember Reiko said she was trying to, but then she said there was a typhoon in China. So her products might not make it in time for Q4. So any anyone else uh, launching a product and also let us know where you guys are um, watching from and make sure to leave a leave, leave a thumbs up below to let me know you guys are still paying attention alive or uh, angry face if you if you don't like Matt's haircut <laughs> yeah let, <laughs> let, let, let us know you're here yeah, um, let us know you're here right now we're just staring at a computer screen so it's great to see your comments come in and and familiar faces in your thumbnails. So keep them coming. All right. What's next? And Lindsay, where's John today? I saw Lindsay on, but where's John? Um, another question from Jill. Let me go ahead and put this on up here. All right, it worked. Jill says, using Helium 10, how can you find information about your competitors' giveaways? Now, I'm assuming you're talking about not Amazon giveaways, which is a completely separate thing, but somebody doing like a launch or a giveaway. And you can't really see information about that. However, um, this is what you do. I'm still in the accordion. I, I'm going to go back to collagen. I can't. I can't be without collagen peptides. This is this is too weird being in something else. Let's look at collagen peptides. Now, I don't think anybody's in launch on here, but I'm going to show you how you can tell if somebody is doing a giveaway using the Helium 10 tool. So I'm just going to open up our Chrome extension and uh, X-ray right here. This is gold, by the way. Whatever he's about to say, pay attention. 
he doesn't even know what I'm going to now you, now you set the bar too high. I, I could have a complete dud right here. And you've piqued my interest. <laughs> All right. So one thing I would do, like, let's say if I look at this page and I see this is a well-established um, search, you know, or look how many reviews that these sellers uh, have, you know, 6,000, 2,000, 600. So right off the bat, I know most likely none of these guys are in launch, but like, let's say I saw somebody who's selling a lot, right? And only had 16 reviews or this guy's, uh, well, he's only selling 72. I don't know how he got on page one was only selling 72. That would be a, that would be a, um, a study in itself. Um, but here we go. Here is one that has zero reviews. So I'm going to take a look at this guy's sales here. All right. So what you would see if somebody is doing a launch, like let's say this guy, this guy had no history right here. And then boom, actually here, here, he probably might have done a giveaway here. So like he was only, you know, selling down here and then all of a sudden you see a spike. Well, that is what you would tell you if somebody is doing a giveaway. All right. So you would be looking for these spikes, you know, if they have pretty consistent sales or they just started and then out of nowhere, they have this huge spike. Well, that would tell you what's going on there. Um, I'm actually curious about this guy. He has his review count. This guy has always had zero reviews, huh? Oh no, here we go. Hmm. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is another thing that you could tell of why it'll seem like that guy was a new seller. But explain how he only has zero reviews. Looking at this chart, Matt, what happened to him? Review count went down. He looks like he got some of his Boom. reviews knocked off from Amazon. So yeah. we can look in review count. Uh, and normally that'll show us that their reviews uh, were taken off. Yeah. So this guy on July 30th, he had 226 reviews. And then boom, July 30th, the next day, he had only 40. Almost and, 200 and, removed. Yep. And then August 14th, he's 40. Amazon's like, you know what? All your reviews are garbage. We're going to prick you down to one. Yeah. And then now he's got zero reviews. So, guys, if you guys are doing shady things to get reviews, um, Amazon's going to catch you. You know, the Amazon review police has been in full force. Full effect. Yeah. Full effect lately. So, anyways, oh, here we go. Look at this. This might be just looking at this. This might be a guy who's in launch. Now, this is only a sponsored property. Let me just look what this looks like here. Ah, so if I look at 90 days, this guy only started on September 13th and he sold seven the first day. And then all of a sudden he's up to 15. So like if these were bigger numbers, like if it was, this was seven and this was a hundred guarantee this guy is doing a giveaway, you know, right now. So that's how you would see Jill using the helium 10 tools. But can you see what word they're targeting? Probably not. No. All right. So thank you very much for that, Jill. Let's go to another question now. Uh, this is from Renzo. Matt, you want to take Renzo's question? Sure. Renzo, thanks for your question. Uh, looks like he's got another question. Maybe we answered a previous one. I'm selling a product and would like to see what the steps are that I need to do in order to check my competitors' keywords and how to find new keywords to optimize my listing. We've got a tool for that. It's called Cerebro, uh, reverse ASIN search tool. It's what Bradley focused on at the beginning of today's episode. So if you missed that part, go back to it. It was like the first 10 minutes or so. Uh, so I would go into Cerebro, enter in your competitor's ASIN and see what keywords they're ranking for. All right, very good. So Cerebro. Kind of an easy, quick fix, but that's where I would start. Yeah, so just like, remember, it's the Cerebro old uh, or original version still works. Like you don't have to put competing ASINs here, but right. like let's say you just found one. Hey, it's, I, I want to know what one guy does. You would just you know go ahead and, and uh, click it here. Wow, I can't believe I've never searched this. <laughs> uh, I found a collagen peptides that I had not done a search before. They must be new then. Yeah. Uh, so then the way to take this a step further is to enter in competing ASINs and uh, do what Bradley showed at the beginning of the show. Okay. So let's... What is... Okay. All right. Mary says, Amazon took reviews away. Yep, that's exactly what happened in that other one. Dan says, question regarding keyword tracker. It seems that the tool does not differentiate whether it's sponsored product rank or has organic rank. Uh, this is 100% what you see in keyword tracker, 100% organic ranks. It is not the sponsored um, the sponsored ad placement you know, rank that they have. So 
So Dan, if you see that, you know, you enter an ASIN and then you enter a keyword and it says it's rank five, it is not the sponsored uh, rank because there's no real rank for sponsored ads because those, those are just thrown randomly out there. So thank you for that question, Dan. Based on bid and a ton of things. So. Yeah, yeah. Here's one, okay. All right, here we go. I am trying to set my sales goal to get to page one for, actually, can you read that? It's too far away from me. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to set my sales goal to get to page one for certain keywords. I typed the word in magnet and it only gave me the numbers for a bunch of other related terms, but not then, not the one I typed in. All right, let's go ahead and go to magnet and you guys know what I'm gonna search for. Collagen peptides. All right. So yes, I have. I've searched this about 30,000 times. We get it. We get it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So if it doesn't show up here, guys, which I think usually does, whatever word that you enter here, uh, who is that? Jolene? Yeah. Uh, yes. Jolene, whatever word you enter here, that's going to come up right here. You get that information right here you don't even have to search for it down here so collagen peptides exact volume 71,000 broad volume 181,000 competing products 4,000 so they remove her question if you go any oh, further can, down yeah so now i'm going to go down let me make sure it's visible so let me see if it actually comes down here i'm going to i'm going to do show phrases that contain collagen for example and as you can see there is 1055 words that came up but how many have collagen in it and there are 629. I'm going to search by exact phrase search volume. Am I still visible here? What was your seed keyword, Bradley? Collagen peptide. Collagen. So here it is. So maybe sometimes it doesn't, um, but I'm pretty sure it usually does. But no matter what, I'm positive. The word that you enter here, it's going to come up right here. But as you can see, it still comes up down here. But sometimes you actually have to search for it because it might not have as many uh, keyword searches as you do. And look, this, this one has the Amazon's Choice Badge. So thank you for that question, Jolene. And she does not see the CPR. So Jolene, the CPR column is right here in Magnet. Can you, yeah, you can see it here. CPR total giveaway, CPR daily giveaways. If that column is blurred out for you, you might be on a free account. Ah, that could be it too, yeah. So yeah, you might be on a free account if you don't see the CPR um, giveaway uh, totals. And again, that column are the number of units it takes for you, the number of sales you need to make for that keyword to launch and to get onto page one, to okay. end up on page one. All right, thank you very much, Jolene. Let's see here what else we have. Uh, Mark has a question. Matt, can you handle this? It says, inter, uh, it says what is the success score? Mark, thank you, sir. Uh, the success score, Bradley, if you wanna pull up X-Ray, is the score we give uh, the market in x-ray. So it's our internal score based on a dozen of factors and we choose to display. So I'm going to mouse over the score here. Uh, we take, like I said, into account a couple dozen factors and we choose to display the top three or four factors that we think are most important to you. So, uh, the price, it looks like there's a moderate variation in pricing. So what that's, what this second one would show, price standard deviation, this shows the change in price. So if the whole market is selling maybe uh, a $20, a $20 product, right? So good consistency in the market would say it's a, a good product to launch into. We're of the opinion that one of the factors that might hurt your chances of launching in that market would be prices that are all over the place, right? Maybe that's a poor keyword and folks aren't purchasing there. Maybe it could mean a number of things. It, you, it would be something that you would have to dive deeper into uh, in that market. Another one is price. So average price, moderate cost, low barrier to entry. So that one tells us that the, the price for that product is fairly average, whether it be from 20 to 40 or 50. So if you want to source a product, maybe a thousand units of something that cost you $40, uh, that might be expensive to get into. Whereas if you're selling, per, uh, purchasing a thousand units of something that costs $4, it might be an easy market to get into. So that's another indicator we've got. So this is again, an internal score, the success score that we give to products or markets within products within that market. Um, 
The last thing I'll say, <laughs> the last thing I'll say is that uh, the score is pretty conservative right now. So if you see something like this product that is a star and a half, it's not the end of the world. Um, so I would just say, look deeper. If you see anything that's like a two or two and a half star and above, it's worth taking a look at. All right. So thank you for that question. That was Mark. And I was laughing not at my partner in crime here, but John came on and says, wait, let me hide this. John says, I'm late, but I made it easy. Love me. So I'm thinking of uh, Drake, you know, John, John, do you love me? So I, I was about to go up and do the dance, but you guys uh, don't come on here for that nonsense. So John, we still love you, even though you're late. Um, your, your wife's been holding it down and she's baking you cookies. John, you're a little skinny. Make sure to eat some cookies. You got to bulk up like me. So I don't feel so fat when I'm, when I see you. All right. Um, TJ says, I've never seen a success score over 60 points. What should we be targeting for a success score? You know, right now that's still in beta. So we, I have, I think I, I've seen one of 60 points, but for me, I just use that not as a, as a kind of guide. Right. You know, if, if I see one that's really low, um, most likely it's not worth looking into, but if I see something like 35, 40, well, that's going to trigger me to do a little deeper dive into that to see what's going on. That's when I would start taking some of those ASINs and going to uh, Cerebro and uh, doing that competitor search. Um, so anything like over a, a 40 to 45 is, is something that, that's kind of like a, a green light to me that, hey, you need to check out this niche a little bit more. Right. So thank you. Yeah, right. we thought it was important to lean more on the conservative side as opposed to giving everything a four or a five star or 100 points and uh, leading you in the wrong direction. So for now, it airs on the conservative side. Okay, and then Jalene did uh, clarify that her question or that she does have the free trial. So that's probably why she doesn't see the CPR uh, number over there. So Jolene, got to upgrade, got to upgrade, go all in. Uh, you know, we're, we're the best, uh, best value tool out there. You know, some people say, oh, I have sticker shock, you know, uh, Diamond Planet 97, right? Mm -hmm. $97. Platinum. platinum. What, which one? Oh, the platinum. Which is better, diamond or platinum? Uh, platinum's ninety-seven, and diamond is one ninety-seven. Okay, yeah, so. the platinum's ninety-seven. But guys, if you think about it, before I used to have like six, seven different tools, and yeah, I was paying twenty bucks a month for it, so it's a little bit "quote unquote" less. But it was for like one or two things, and then added up, I was paying like one hundred and eighty dollars for seven different tools. But Helium Ten has over twenty tools for less than the you know what I was paying. So if you add it up, guys, it should be worth it for you. Speaking of which, that leads me to another question here where uh, somebody said here, here we go. Desiree says, am I able to use this software for online arbitrage or is this meant to be used solely for a private label? The answer is Desiree, so many of our tools can be used for our arbitrage. Like for example, black box, you know, maybe I want to see, you know, maybe, you know, Nike, I think is gated down, but let's say Nike is something that you have some special deal uh, you know, you, you, you work at Walmart and you can get 50% off Nike or whatever. So I would enter Nike into the title keyword search and see which ones are selling higher. And that would come up. Um, magnet, I wouldn't use too much. Um, let's see what else I would use a uh, 5k checker. Like if you made, if you, if you're a arbitrage seller and you actually made the listing, you know, for an arbitrage product, you need to make sure that you're going to come up in the most relevant searches. So you can use the 5k checker uh, to check that hijacker alert is i can't even talk to you i'm slurring my words i'm not having a stroke guys i swear <laughs> hijacker alert um is something i think mostly that uh our wholesale and uh, online arbitrage people use because you know when you're in online arbitrage you're not the only one that can get the buy box there's probably like 20 people you're you're fighting against and you want to be able to know when somebody has taken over the buy box from you because your sales go to zero if you don't have the buy box. Uh, Refund Genie, if you're doing anything FBA, it doesn't matter what kind of FBA you're doing, whether it's private label, arbitrage, you're sending Amazon products, they're losing it or they're giving people refunds that they shouldn't or they're forklift rent over a product and most of the time, yeah, they do refund you, but our Refund Genie will go out there and see if they owe you any more money. Um, in our tools right here, one of the biggest ones, profitability calculator, that's number one for, for, for wholesale arbitrage. If you're right there at the store and, and you want to know if you're going to make money, you, you enter in the cost right there like we had done. Let's say you see this at Ralph's or something like that, and at Ralph's it costs you know like $10, right? And then I know it I'm going to sell it for this. Oh, my goodness. I still make $6. 
definitely I'm going to go ahead and buy it. You know, um, and, th and this is the exact product. So like, actually this almost might be better if you're doing arbitrage, um, the profitability calculator. If you have, if you see somebody that has multiple items in stock, like, let me see, here we go. Collagen peptides are six sellers. So maybe this is a, wholesale or arbitrage product. And I'm like, there are six guys and I know I can't sell it for 26. How many do they have left? Well, I go right here to our uh, inventory level and this is going to tell me all the different buyers and then how many they have left in stock. Um, so let's see here. And it shows the price. So like maybe I pull this up. I'm like, oh, $65. I don't have to worry about this guy. But the guy who's selling for $27, he's got over a thousand in stock. I'm yep. never going to get the buy box. So I'm not even going to buy this product. Now, if this guy wasn't here and then there was only this guy, like and he had nine left in stock and let's say his price was like $28. Okay. Well, that might trigger me to say, I'm just going to wait this guy out. He'll probably sell out today and I'm going to hop on this listing and sell it. But again, has nothing to do with private label. If you, if you're using wholesale arbitrage, this totally would have worked for you. Any other um, applications that you know of? No. For you covered Hello? it. I was just going to say to move on to the next question. If you want to open up x-ray, uh, it looks like Mark asked, what is this? No, we just answered that. I'm sorry. There was another one that I just I swear see. There was an x-ray question here. It was a sponsored product question. The shorter one. Mm, right here. Oh, here it is. Do we answer that? We have an X. Uh, I don't know if we answer this one yet. This one's Michael. Uh, please can someone explain what SP means in X-Ray on the Chrome extension? Uh, SP, you see it there on the first three products, sponsored products. So those guys are running uh, sponsored products ads, and they're there because they paid to be there. All right. And, and, and the one thing I really like about our tool is that this is these sponsored ads are not taken into consideration in the total revenue and average revenue. I, I used to use something else, and it would kind of throw me off because... I would see, oh, wow, average revenue was this or average BSR was this, but it was taking these into consideration in the rank, uh, which in my, in, for me, these are irrelevant when I take into consideration the average price. I only want to know what's organic. So like right. if I were to take this off, nothing changes up here. All right. So um, that's pretty interesting. The only time this does change, this is kind of cool. Guys, watch this success score. So nothing changes as I, as I do these. I'm going to do these bottom ones here until I get to now there's only no oh my god how many sponsored ads are on this page good grief right. amazon really wants to make a buck we got to pay for jeff bezos new pajamas you guys see that how he went to yeah, work in his pajamas funny. or something all right so it says 31 right now watch what happens when i take this off 21. now i don't know if matt knows this because i just discovered this the other day do you know why when i took off that last sponsored ad the success score went down Probably I don't I didn't see the bottom, but did it pull up results from page two? Nope. Nope. Although that's a good point. I could actually do that. Load more results. So I this was just explained to me last week, uh, or the week before, where the reason why if there's no sponsored ads here, the success success score goes down is let's say this was an organic search and there were no sponsored ads. Well, if Amazon does not put sponsored ads on a search pa page most likely they deem that that keyword is kind of irrelevant to, to customer purchases. Right. You know, and Amazon really wants to make a dollar. So the fact that they would not put a sponsored ad in a search must mean that that is like low priority. Nobody buys anything from that, from that keyword search. So then that would affect your success score. So who was that? Who asked that? That was Michael. Michael. Thank you very much for that. So now I'm going to take off our screen share for now while Matt talks about our affiliate program, and I'm gonna try and pull up um, the giveaway for the free t-shirt from last week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if you want to promote Helium 10 tools or uh, any of our other properties, uh, Pixel Perfect Photography, uh, we've got a few more things coming. Visit crushit.online, crushit.online. And uh, we can go ahead and get you set up on the affiliate program. So Michelle, our affiliate manager will help you get set up. She's awesome. Tell her Matt and Bradley sent you and, uh, yeah, promote helium 10. Uh, you use it, love it, make a little money while you promote it. Can you talk a little bit about how, how the program works since I'm not done yet? Like, you know what, you know, some people hear the word affiliates. Oh yeah. You know what, you know, somebody clicks on my link and I'll get 15 cents, but how can, how can that really work for people? Sure. So, uh, whether you have a link or you're, you've got a coupon code, we've got a number of ways to promote. Uh, 
we found what works best is if you just be yourself and show how you use the tools, right? Whether it be a YouTube video or uh, whatever else, a blog post, right? If you just bring value to your audience, how the tools are working for you, uh, that's what works best and comes across uh, great. Yeah, and guys, you know, that's there's two main ways that you could have your Helium 10 membership paid for or basically free. You know, the, the easiest way is Refund Genie. Um, you know, we've had people, you know, John, I think, uh, has gotten thousands of dollars in, in refunds. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, John, unless you, you have a mouthful of cookies right now from your wife's baking. But let us know how much money you made on Refund Genie. And I know people, even if you made as low as like 400, you know, as quote unquote low as $400, um, guess what? I mean, that that's four months uh, of your, of your, um, uh, healing fees. 10, yeah, healing right. 10 fees. And, and if you have an affiliate, you know, program and you know, you, you, you have your own little Facebook group or something. And then a few people, you know, just, you know, three, four people have clicked on your link and also now are helium 10 members. Guess what? That pays for your plan. <laughs> that pays for your plan. Three or right, four so, folks. Yeah. That's so. all you need. Four people that click on your link and boom, you got it. Now we, we don't want people going out and spamming the world. You know, if you do become our affiliate world, please don't be that annoying person who every day goes to every Facebook group and, and post the link. You know, that's not what we're talking about, but there are subtle ways to do it. But guys, he gave you the information to, uh, if you want to contact for more information about that now, what everybody's waiting for, Drum Let's roll, get please. To our all right. So last week on this, this is our Helium 10 software videos. There were 76 different commenters. That was uh, possibly a, a new record, you know, for us. So who is going to win the black Helium 10 T-shirt? Let's hit start. It's checking. It's checking. It's checking. It's checking. Claude Riola. Claude Riola, he had asked a question, can someone advise if and when Helium 10 will be able to integrate with Amazon Australia? So Claude, if you're watching, please comment below or send me a private message. Actually, a private message is probably better. You don't want to put your address on there. And send me your address so that we can get you a Helium 10 shirt. And those of you who have answered the question of the day today, you guys are entered for our next drawing. We need to get up to um let's say 100 comments please you know we're only at 60 right now but if we can get up to 100 comments and at least uh, 100 reactions we'll do another drawing um that would be thursday at 3 p.m so again guys the question of the day is what matt uh question of the day is are you launching products in q4 on amazon so are you launching a product in q4 it's probably on a boat right now or on a plane if you are so let us know and if you aren't why not are you busy? Do you have a lot of products already in Amazon? You're plate full. What is catch us up with what's going on in your world? What's John doing? So, so, so Lynn, <laughs> this is a pretty, I love it. You, you guys don't think that your comments have to be just related to us. I've been watching you guys are having like comments with each other, you know, in there and guess what? Each of those is an entry to get a free shirt. So, so I love this little, uh, conversation here. That's going first. We have Lindsay saying that she's making chocolate chip with banana bread actually. All right. But then, Jason jumped in and he says, eat a banana. You need potassium. Uh, I, I think Matt's been eating bananas because his breath has been kind of uh, oh, come uh, on. <laughs> today. Come but uh, we have John going, but look at this. We got a back and forth, you know, conversations going on here. We love it. We love it. We love it. So Bradley mentioned we have to get to 100 comments to do another giveaway. A yep. uh, quick way to do that. We're getting ready to log off today, but share this. If you guys got any value from it or learned something, share it. Uh, with your Facebook audience, or that's a quick way to get us up there. And maybe you're the winner next week or on Thursday. So our next show is this Thursday at 3 p.m. So tune in for that. Bradley, what else do we have? We did the drawing. Oh, man, no, Mar Marius is complaining here. You didn't answer my question. I didn't see any questions. So I'm looking here for a question from Marius. All right, Marius, we'll search for your question for Thursday's show. I'm making a note right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I found it. So we're going to put that. We'll make sure to put this question on Thursday. So thank you guys very much. We're almost at an hour. We got to go off. Um, so guys, keep putting the comments below. Put the reactions. We'll do another drawing Thursday. 3 p.m. is our next broadcast. Thank you guys so much. Helium10.com forward slash questions if you would like to submit more questions for Thursday. So thank you, Marius. Thank you, Jolene. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Aida. Thank you, guys. See you later. Thank you.